on, shaking his head. The mountain kicked at the animal savagely with an armored boot. The horse reared and almost threw him. The Knight of Flowers saluted the king, rode to the far end of the list, and couched his lance ready. Sir Gregor brought his animal to the line, fighting with the reins, and suddenly it began. The mountain stallion broke into a hard gallop, plunging forward wildly, while the mare charged as smooth as a flow of silk. Sir Gregor wrenched his shield into position, juggling with his lance, and all the while fought to hold his unruly mount on a straight line. And suddenly, Loras Tyrell was on him, placing the point of his lance just there. And in an eye blink, the mountain was falling. He was so huge that he took his horse down with him in a tangle of steel and flesh. Ned heard applause, cheers, whistles, shocked gasps, excited muttering, and over it all, the rasping, raucous laughter of the hound. The Knight of Flowers reined up at the end of the list. His lance was not even broken. His sapphires winked in the sun as he raised his visor, smiling. The commons went mad for him. In the middle of the field, Sir Gregor Clegane disentangled himself and came boiling to his feet. He wrenched off his helm and slammed it down onto the ground. His face was dark with fury, and his hair fell down into his eyes. My sword, he shouted to his squire, and the boy ran it out to him. By then, his stallion was back on his feet as well. Gregor Clegane killed the horse with a single blow of such ferocity that it half severed the animal's neck. Cheers turned to shrieks in a heartbeat. The stallion went down to its knees, screaming as it died. By then, Gregor was striding down the lists towards the lowest Tyrell, his bloody sword clutched in his fist. Stop him, Ned shouted, but his words were lost in the roar. Everyone else was yelling as well, and Sansa was crying. It all happened so fast. The Knight of Flowers was shouting for his own sword as Sir Gregor knocked his squire aside and made a grab for the reins of his horse. The mare scented blood and reared. Loras Tyrell kept his seat, but barely. Sir Gregor swung his sword, a savage two-handed blow that took the boy in the chest and knocked him from his saddle. The courser dashed away in panic as Sir Loras lay stunned in the dirt. But as Gregor lifted his sword for the killing blow, a rasping voice warned, leave him be, and a steel-clad hand wrenched him away from the boy. The mountain pivoted in wordless fury, swinging his longsword in a killing arc with all his massive strength behind it. But the hound caught the blow and turned it. And for what seemed an eternity, the two brothers stood hammering at each other as a dazed Loras Turrell was helped to safety. Thrice Ned saw Sir Gregor aim savage blows at the hound's head helmet, yet not once did Sandor send a cut at his brother's unprotected face. It was the king's voice that put an end to it. The king's voice and 20 swords. John Aaron had told them that a commander needs a good battlefield voice, and Robert had proved the truth of that on the trident. He used that voice now. Stop this madness! He boomed, in the name of your king! The hound went to one knee. Sir Gregor's blow cut air, and at last he came to his senses. He dropped his sword and glared at Robert, surrounded by his king's guard and a dozen other knights and guardsmen. Wordlessly, he turned and strode off, shoving past Barristan Selmy. Let him go, Robert said. And as quickly as that, it was over.